Well, thank you all uh, for coming and joining us today. Uh, my name's Sam Grove, and I'm joined by Nikhil uh, from Intel, and we are going to talk to you about the highest performance RISC-V development board. So as we get started here, I wanted to first just kind of put into perspective the history of high five development boards and the journey we've been on. This started back in 2016 with a microcontroller based board and this enabled things like free RTOS and RTEMS and other uh, microcontroller or RTOS operating systems. And then we went to the high five Unleashed and that was the first Linux capable board and then we saw things like Debian come online and then with high five Unmatched we saw lots of support uh, via like, Canonical and Ubuntu, Fedora and lots and lots of others. But now what we're gonna talk about is what's next. So the next board that's coming is the Hi5 Pro P550, and this is gonna be the highest performance RISC-V development board on the most advanced process. So today we'll give you a bit of an introduction to the development board and the features, as well as the capabilities and what's inside uh, the SOC, the soul of the machine. So if we start and look at the CPU, we have the Sci-5 Performance P500 series quad-core CPU. And this is a RV64 GBC ISA with uh, Sci-5 Insights Debug and Trace and a private L2 cache and a shared L3 with a streaming prefetcher. So we're expecting to see this thing come back over two gigahertz, which is gonna push RISC-V software development uh, to much, much new levels, new heights. Additionally, when we talk about the use cases that we're targeting here, I mean, this is really for people building software, packaging software, and you know, distributing software to the rest of the ecosystem. And so, you know, number one, mass market availability is very, very important. Number two is a high premium software development kit, something rugged and reliable we can depend on. And it's really important to note that based on Sci-5's design methodology, this is silicon proving other P-series cores, the P400 series and the P600 series cores as well that we've just announced. But what we're looking to do is fit these into a developer desktop or a RISC-V rack system so you can develop locally and natively or you can hook it up to your CI, CD, CT systems that are in the cloud, okay? So if we go a step further and kind of look at a high level uh, block diagram of the architecture of the board, uh, we're looking to fit this into a micro ATX form factor. And again, at the heart of it is the Intel Horse Creek SOC. And then we fit that out with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory and a PCIe switch for expansion. And that expansion is really important because we uh, give more connectability for more cards that you're interested in enabling drivers for. Uh, the M.2 key slots are important for Wi-Fi uh, networking or uh, NVMe-based storage. And then, of course, USB 3 for more uh, expansion and onboard graphics and uh, networking. So one of the additional things we're looking to enable with this board is supporting uh, remote management capability. For people who are using these uh, for their CI, CD, CT infrastructures, it becomes really important to see you know, a way to remotely control the board, reboot the board, and uh, you know, see it uh, in a remote location that may not be accessed by people. So we're uh, fitting it with a connector for the Open Compute Project's DCSCM, and we're calling it ready so that the ecosystem can come along and build a fitted card so we have a hardware and a software solution. But that's enough about the board. Let's talk a little bit now about the SOC. So when we first looked at this opportunity with RISC-V, what we really thought was, Let's put ourselves in the shoes of the developer. What, what does one need for developing software? Like what Sam said, they got a core. It's a fantastic out-of-order core. Now let's bring together the most important peripherals around it, which will enable a very good ecosystem development, right? So we put together a PCIe Gen 5. It is an Intel 4 process Gen 5 Phi and a DDR5, which is also an Intel uh, built, inbuilt uh, hard IP. We put this together with a Synopsys PCIe controller as a root hub, and we also put a DDR5 controller from Cadence. And we also added a two megabyte of scratch pad memory that uh, you could use in your development. 
And as any other microcontroller or any other desktop, we added all the common peripherals that are pretty much useful for a development board, which is a UART, SPI, QSPI, uh, OctalSpy, PWMs. You have a peripheral DMA, and we have an I3C, I2C combination IP as well. Now let's look at what features does PCIe enable. It's a Gen 5 root complex. It can go up to 32 GTS. We support up to eight lanes. Of course, at Gen 5, we probably will be supporting about four lanes or two lanes, but at Gen 3, we're able to do eight lanes. Uh, we support all the configuration transactions. We can go full payload from 128 byte to four kilobyte. We have auto lane reversal, which we are actually actively using on the board. You would see it there in the uh, booth. Um, we have one very unique feature in both the files. I'll also talk about it in the DDR5. The file training sequence is automatically managed by embedded firmware. There is no involvement from the user to train the D uh, either the PCIe file or the DDR5. We are bringing in new capabilities for RASDES for debug of PCIe. So this is in summary of what we are enabling on PCIe. On the DDR5, uh, it is the latest generation technology that you see. In fact, to be honest, it's very hard to even find DRAM modules, but we already have it enabled on silicon here. We can go up to 5600 MTS. Just like the PCIe, it has its own embedded microcontroller to manage the training sequence. Apart from that, we have two quad spies, one octal spy, two I3Cs, a UART for debug, which we actively use in the OpenOCD. And we have PWMs, we have GPIOs with slew rate control, and the peripheral transfers between the different peripherals using peripheral DMA, this takes the workload off the uh, main CPU. So this is, in summary, what we are enabling as a Hot Streak SOC. And uh, here uh, comes a very high-level overview of how Hot Creek really boots up. We, we have a dedicated boot ROM, and then it boots up and passes control to the secondary bootloader. And then the secondary bootloader jumps to the Linux kernel and finally brings up the operating system. Over to you, Sam. Yep, perfect. And so, you know, we're really excited. The board is up in the labs. We have a demo that's running on the show floor, so you can see the bring up board in the lab, uh, the OS up and running. But what's even more exciting is, you know, based on the feedback we've gotten from everybody, uh, the community and developers who depend on these to build the RISC-V packages is the breakthrough performance or the uplifting performance that we're going to see here compared to the High 5 Unmatched. So we're talking about a 3-plus uplift in spec, and when we talk about the memory subsystem and the caching, right, uh, we're seeing greater than 20 increases on Lig Quantum, which is really like a memory streaming type benchmark. So really, really uh, high performance uh, uh, uplift uh, from generation of board to generation of board. And what this means is you can build more, you can develop more, you can package more, and you can ship more. Um, <clears throat> but that's not it, right? So when you look at uh, how to optimize software or the things that we need to you know, build or improve, how do you know where to start, right? HPM events, right? There are uh, 11x more events, that's 300 plus within the CPU and the, the caches. And so, uh, and then you couple that with more event counters and what that means is more visibility into your software or how your software is running on such a device. Um, beyond that, we're talking about more PCI bandwidth with an order ogler on the port that it connects in through, uh, some onboard graphics so we can kind of boot this. It's a USB keyboard, it's a mouse. It's an HDMI connection, and boom, you have this developer machine that's up and running. So couple that with you know, more PCIe expansion, additional slots, the DDR5, so the faster memory, and then the OCP DCSCM ready for remote management in 1U, 2U racks of data centers. And the question really becomes, what will you enable, right? So we're targeting availability the summer of 23, but we do have uh, the website available for updates so you can track the progress. And for anybody that's here who uh, builds software, packages software for RISC-V and is interested in this, I'd love you to come by the booth afterwards. We'll be there to have some talks and maybe get a, a couple questions in or like a, a, just understand what you will do to enable. So with that, we'll say thank you. Any questions?
don't see any questions, so. Can you have one for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe next Christmas it'll be there. Yes, so it's coming in summer, so. Okay, thank you very Perfect. much. Thank, thank you, you, folks. Thank you. Bye.